Now we're going to examine how the variational principle works in practice with an example. So I've picked the harmonic oscillator here, which is a potential energy of 1 half kx squared, a wave function which is the psi of x. And I picked a trial function, which is a Gaussian function, e to the minus alpha x squared. And we know that the ground state of the harmonic oscillator is actually a Gaussian function. So what we should see here is that the variational principle, using the principle that the minimum energy with respect to this parameter alpha will get us the correct ground state wave function and correct uh, ground state energy. If this was some different functional form, we would end up with some energy which was a minimum for that parameter, but would be some value higher than the true energy. Okay, so we've got these formulas here. We've got our wave function, our Hamiltonian is just our kinetic plus potential energy, and the expectation value for the energy of this trial function is our this integral divided by this integral. So we can also split that up into, instead of the expectation value of the Hamiltonian, we, let's split it up into the expectation value of potential plus kinetic energy. We can do that because integrals and derivatives are all linear operators. And also these are going to get quite complicated and we want, to get, we want to keep track of everything that's going on. So first let's calculate this bottom part which is just the normalization if you don't have a normalized wave function and we don't as of this form here. So this integral here, this phi star phi, is going to be equal to the integral of minus infinity to infinity of dx psi star e to the alpha x squared star, which is just going to be itself, e to the minus alpha x squared. Okay, so then that gives us the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus 2 alpha x squared dx. And if we look up this type of integral on a table, what we'll see is that the integral of from minus infinity to infinity dx of e to the minus ax is going to be the square root of pi over a, and our pi is 2, our a is 2 alpha. So what we're going to have is this integral is going to be pi over 2 alpha. Okay, so I'm writing that down here, r phi phi is equal to the square root of pi over 2 alpha. And right now we could just uh, take the take the this to the minus 1 half power and tack it onto our wave function and then ignore this denominator because this denominator just ensures normalization. But uh, let's just uh, continue on with the rest of our calculation here. So the next thing we're going to do is look at this expectation value of V, the potential energy. So for that, we're going to have another integral, which is going to be the integral of minus infinity to infinity with respect to x, e to the minus alpha x squared, then the operator v, which is just 1 half kx squared, times the wave function e to the minus alpha x squared. Okay, then this operator is just multiplicative. There's no differentiation or anything like that. So this commutes w with uh, any of these operations here. So we can instead write the in rewrite the integral in the following way. We can pull out the factor of 1 half k. Those are just constants. We can do integral minus infinity to infinity dx of x squared from here and e to the minus 2 alpha x squared. Okay, then this integral here, if I'm going to highlight that integral in orange, extending that, we'll get 1 half k. And then the value of the integral that we're going to get is going to be 1 over 4 alpha. If you look up the integral of uh, x squared e to the minus ax squared, you'll see where this came from. And then times pi over 2 alpha. Okay, so our expectation value of the potential energy 
that total is going to be square root of pi over 2 alpha times uh, k over 8 alpha from these constants here. k over 8 alpha. Okay, so that's our potential. Now moving on to the little bit trickier kinetic energy. That's going to be the integral from minus infinity to infinity with respect to x of psi star e to the minus alpha x squared star. Again, being real so it doesn't end up mattering. The kinetic energy operator minus h bar squared over 2m second derivative with respect to x times the wave function e to the minus alpha x squared up there, just this integral here. Okay, so first of all we need to differentiate this uh, wave function twice. The operator, kinetic energy operator, is a, is a differential operator. So we need to get the second derivative of the wave function here. So the second derivative of e to the minus alpha x squared is equal to the first derivative of its first derivative which is minus 2 alpha x e to the minus uh, alpha x squared. That was just the chain rule on that. And then this is going to be give, uh, give us two terms. We need to use the product rule for this term and that term. And that is going to give us, differentiating the first term gives us minus 2 alpha e to the minus x, e to the minus alpha x squared. And the second term is going to pull down another factor of 2 alpha x, well, minus 2 alpha x while leaving this term untouched. So that's going to be plus 4 alpha squared x squared e to the minus alpha x squared. Okay, just enough room in that line there. All right, so this means that for our integral, and then once we have this, everything else is just multiplication, so we can multiply by this psi star over here. So this means that our kinetic energy expectation value, this integral here, is going to be, we can pull out the minus h bar squared over 2m to the front. Then we're going to have two integrals. We're going to have one where we have a minus 2 alpha integral minus infinity to infinity dx of just e to the minus 2 alpha x squared there plus a 4 alpha squared alpha being a constant we can pull that out integral minus infinity to infinity with respect to x of x squared e to the minus 2 alpha x squared and again that's when we take this result here and then multiply by the psi star over here. That's where we get that factor of 2 up here in the exponent. Okay, then these integrals, if we look them up uh, similarly in tables, what we'll get, um, well this first one here is just the same result we had uh, up at the top here. So we're just going to get a factor of square root of pi over 2 alpha. This one here is going to be x squared e to the minus 2 alpha x squared is the same that we had up here and that value gave us a 1 over 4 alpha square root of pi over 2 alpha. Okay so then the final result we have for our kinetic energy T phi, ba -ba -da, we're going to have each term has a factor of square root of pi over 2 alpha, so I'll factor that out. 2 alpha. Okay, this first term we have minus 2 alpha times minus h bar squared over 2m, so that should get me an h bar squared alpha over m, because those two should cancel, the minus sign should cancel. Then I should get over here, um, going to have this 4 and that 4 cancel, so those 4s are gone. 
Um, one factor of alpha goes away from this denominator here, so I'm just left with an alpha left over. We already factored out this part. So this is just going to give us a minus h bar squared alpha over 2m. And then we continue this on, we see that our kinetic energy, this is just twice uh, the negative of this, so what we'll get is square root of pi over 2 alpha times h bar squared alpha over 2m. Okay, excellent. So we have, those, we have all the values we need, we have all our integrals, so let's move to the, to the other side and start adding those together. So our e of phi is going to equal our, our potential energy, which is square root of pi over 2 alpha times k over 8 alpha. Okay then we have adding in our kinetic energy plus it has a factor of square root of pi over 2 alpha and it has h bar squared alpha over 2m. Okay, then our denominator was just our normalization integral, this phi star phi, and that again was square root of pi over 2 alpha. So the net effect of this denominator here was to enforce normalization. So we get this cancels, that cancels, that cancels. All those terms go away. And what we're left with is just that our e of phi is going to equal k over 8 alpha, our potential energy, plus h bar squared alpha over 2m, our kinetic energy. OK, so now what we need to do is to pick the value of alpha which minimizes the energy. So we can accomplish that by, it's not a partial derivative, it's a total derivative, by differentiating the energy with respect to alpha. So this is going to mean we differentiate this term with respect to alpha, which is just going to give us a minus k over 8 alpha squared and differentiate this term with respect to alpha, which is just going to be h bar squared over 2m. And then this, we set this equal to zero, such that we're at a minimum. We're at a minimum value of alpha for the energy. OK, so that means that we have k over 8 alpha squared equals h bar squared over 2m. Move, them, move this to the other side. We did that. We can cross multiply and we're going to get 2km equals 8 alpha squared h bar squared. Then we divide both sides by 8 h bar squared. We get alpha squared equals we should have km over 4 h bar squared. And we take the square root of that, and we have that alpha should equal the square root of km over 2 h bar. OK, so that's the value of alpha, which should have the minimum energy. So let's see what the energy is when we pick that value of alpha. So here's our energy expression up here. So our energy of the minimum alpha of alpha min it's going to equal k over 8 times the inverse of that, which is 2 h bar over square root of km plus h bar squared over 2m times alpha square root of km over 2 h bar. OK, so what can we cancel here? Um, we've got a 2 and an 8 there, that leaves us with a 4 there. We've got a 2 and a 2, that leaves us with a 4 there. This h bar cancels out the square of that one. Got our h bar there. Okay, so this square root of k on the denominator here 
makes it square root of k on the top here and multiplying by this square root of k in the numerator here makes this a square root of m on the bottom there. So what we are left over with then is that the energy of our minimum alpha is going to be h bar over 4 square root of k over m plus h bar again over 4, 2 times 2 times square root of, we have again a square root of k on the top, square root of k, square root of m on the bottom. And if we remember from the harmonic oscillator, we had this quantity, the angular frequency omega, which was equal to the square root of the spring constant in the potential energy, this k, divided by the mass of the particle m. So if we add that all together, what we're getting is that our final energy of our minimum alpha is going to be h bar over 4 omega plus h bar over 4 omega which is 1 half h bar omega and if we remember from the harmonic oscillator this is the exact ground state energy of the harmonic oscillator then if we plug in this value of alpha into our wave function here our normalization constant would just be the uh, this to the minus one half power so our phi of alpha min as well would equal two alpha over pi to the one fourth e to the minus square root of km x squared over two h bar and if you look up what the value of the ground state wave function is for the harmonic oscillator, that is the exact ground state wave function as well. So why did this work? This worked because we picked a functional form which had a parameter in there which we could optimize to a value which gave us a lowest energy. And because it was the exact functional form, that lowest energy was equal to the ground state energy. If we had a functional form which was only approximate, we could have minimized the energy with respect to whatever parameters are in here, and we would have approached this exact energy as much as we could. The, low, the lower the energy, the better the approximation to the wave function, and whenever your energy is exact, that means your wave function is exact, because the only wave function which will produce this energy is this exact ground state wave function here, phi. And so remember, this works for ground state wave functions only because we have to minimize this. Any uh, other excited states are going to require different methods like perturbation theory, which we'll look at in a short amount of time.